Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. We honor you. Can you hold the hand of your neighbor and just pray for that person? And that in this season we proclaim divine shifts over your life. Uh, we proclaim divine shifts over your life. Only that which the Lord is doing will find expression in, in your life in this season. For as the Lord begins to shake the earth, that which will stay in your life will be that which is eternal in value. Only that which bears etern eternal value alone will stand. And that whatever God is doing in this season, He will occasion a shift in your life in my life that in the name of jesus christ we gather tonight that the lord will occasion a divine shift and everything around you everything around your ministry your calling your career and let there be a shift tonight let the will and the counsel of god find expression i cry for a shift i desire a shift I come to you today. I receive your word. I receive your name. And I come into your glory. That Father occasion a divine shift. Oh, somebody pray. Come on, pray for your brother. Pray for your brother. We thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray um my brother is here with me my own very cb cb means covenant brother i stand in a very critical relationship is a is a covenant friend to my spiritual father and then he's my friend so when he's with my father i relate with him as one that is a father because the father of your friend the father of your friend or the friend of your father is your father but when we are together he is my covenant brother so it's a very tricky one so when we are in makodi i accord him that office of okay when he talks now i can't i won't say a word i'll just say all right yes sir i use that but when we are out i say hey giddy alpha very tricky one but god has been able to give me the wisdom to manage it in the past years Please help me celebrate my brother, Reverend Gideon Odoma. Once upon a time, Pastor Ayo said, You know, Austin is my friend, and hell broke loose. The truth is, Pastor Ayo is not my friend. I call him Papi. But um, when he called me friend, all hell broke loose. I'm wise enough to know who a friend is. Can you help me celebrate, Papi? <laughs> How many more minutes do I have? Just buying time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, let's go into our scriptures tonight. I just have a few thoughts to share. When you are on this kind of platform, You've got to be ready. You, you need to count what you say. Lord, cause what to be spoken, be spoken, and cause that which to be heard, to be heard. I ask that you give me the tongue of a pen of a ready writer. And let your word free. Find free flow tonight. Uh, there's a young lady here who is trusting God for direction. And this direction is with regards to your career. You, you want to switch career. Please, who is this person? You are trusting God for a career switch. Come. I'm trusting God for a career switch. All right, come and sit on my seat. You're trusting God for a career switch. Now you are two. Praise the Lord. 
um, the word will be very clear to the owner. The Lord said, you have been anxious and that he wants you to hold your peace. And the reason why you want to shift is because of challenges in the office. So who is the person? You? Uh-uh. Two of you again. All right, come this way. Maybe as you take some steps, I can see one or two things again. Come, come this way. Are you part of them? You are Usher. Look at me. No, I mean you came out for career shift. Don't look at the people. I don't want them to film you. I'm not looking. I don't. I'm not looking for confirmation or affirmation. Uh, but career shift. Okay, so you you are running because of challenges, and the Lord said it's not time for you to leave the office. He says stop being anxious. All right, there is a door that He will open at the appointed time. Okay, um, and He's going to bring to pass that which he wants to do all right so peace to you and grace to you in jesus name i also saw a matter concerning you which god is going to perfect today you see i'm talking to you and i'm laughing god is going to perfect your marital destiny all right and while you were coming out, I saw you holding something and it fell off your hand. And tonight, you are going to take it back. There is something very precious that fell off your hand. And Jesus said, he's giving it back to you. You, you know what I'm talking about. There's something very precious that fell. And this is about three years ago. And Jesus said, he's giving it back to you. And he's bringing beauty. He's bringing beauty for ashes. Is bringing beauty for ashes and finally between now and the month of june there is something that will happen to your life that you don't deserve it's just going to be by grace and you will become an envy among your colleagues between now and the month of june so you are the one i'm talking about grace to you strength and supernatural speed in the name of jesus all right sister you can come let me pray with you so you are not the one that is anxious we are trusting god for career shift okay so i'll give you an assignment because what i heard was the people should hold on so i've spoken to them but since you are also coming i want you to seek the face of the lord for clarity hmm? so this atmosphere will give you that pathway all right so that you go to where you are sent you don't go to where you want hmm? you must go to where you are sent so as you go there jesus himself will lift and promote you all right but um can we stand stand here don't be in a hurry I, i'm free to deal toes. <laughs> can you stretch forth your hands and and pray for this lady and the prayer is simple affliction will not come the second time just just Pray for her that affliction will not rise a second time. No procedure will be carried on this body, but the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. We swallow up every affliction. That affliction will not come for the second time. We speak freedom to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Oh, can you hold the hand? Thank you, ma'am. Can you hold the hand of your neighbor again while you are seated? There's somebody here that is coming under supernatural restoration, and I don't know what God is restoring. So please, can you pray for your friend seated by you? Everything everything is going to be determined by your utterance please pray for that person let there be multiple restorations oh my god i sense the anointing of the spirit of god here tonight let there be mighty restorations mighty restoration mighty restoration mighty 
a mighty restoration somebody is coming in release that grace from your lips that lord in the name of jesus christ of nazareth let there be supernatural restoration over this life whatever 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 oh my god whatever is missing in your life that tonight the lord will restore malatrophila Kalindras Kapolot Yatandis A Kalombri Nia Tagla Boronadi Setre Belia Kandro Kopogolodias Lembranda Satelia Ifretela Bokondri Belataya Manda Isu Kopogolodias Let there be mighty restoration Let there be mighty, mighty restoration tonight Tonight let there be restoration let there be mighty restoration let there be mighty restoration that which the enemy has taken that which the enemy is sitting on tonight is restored le popa ale kenya ndoli sibra hakale de severa tayadwa oh jesus oh jesus Oh Jesus Thank you Father In Jesus mighty name we pray Okay Spirit you see as I was Seated while you were singing The Lord said I should say to you That he's brought you into a new season and he said you should look beyond yourself beyond yourself not because you are selfish but you've been beating yourself blue black and he said look beyond it there are no limitations to what i've called you to do and there is no shame to your work with me says the lord so there's no shame and there are no limitations to what i've called you to do there is no shame to your calling he said look away from yourself and look unto me I am the rewarder of them that diligently seek me. I see Jesus bringing addition to your life. There is a feather that has been added to your work with God. A brand new feather has been added. And it's a feather of authority, no power. But a feather of authority. And I pray with you today, brother, that the Spirit of God will strengthen you. That in your closet, there will be an encounter that will solidify what I've just said to you. Don't beat yourself blue black anymore. I perceive in my spirit that there are people here who God wants to anoint tonight after I've been on this mountain for many days. I said to Elias, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, You've, you have asked for something hard, but how be it when you see me being taken? That which you requested for shall be your portion. There are men here and there are women here who are vessels unto honor, who are vessels that God wants to use, but distraction has really dealt a blow on you. Before I request for what God wants you to receive, can you ask God to help you out of these distractions? I don't know what the distractions are, but there are some of us here who are under intense distraction. That you want to ask God to bring you out, to grant you grace. To grant you grace. That you are going to come out of these distractions tonight. No more distractions. No more distractions. <laughs> no more distractions. Help us. Theophilus sang a song, he said, another measure from my ankle to my knee. From my knee to my waist. Until there is an overflow. But I'll Jesus help us from our distractions tonight. Find us worthy. As you are making ready a people upon the face of the earth, find us worthy. 
help us to be the carriers of this emblem called your grace help us oh god to be accurate dispatchers of this fountain of life so deep so deep so pure so vast yet we can explore thank you father in jesus name we pray while you are seated can you just stretch forth your hands before him and just tell him lord i'm here again pour into me rich just just pour into me the resource of heaven there are unique anointings and unique graces that the lord will pour into you even as i speak now divine resources revelation illumination inspiration divine resources the wisdom that breaks problems into spare parts with divine solution point to me point to me there is somebody here as you are speaking point to me god is giving you the wisdom to come out of the depths that you are into god is giving you wisdom i see i see someone in debt in millions and i see the lord releasing the wisdom that is required to come out of it that's what god is giving to you there is a handle there's a department of wisdom that the holy ghost is opening and is pouring on you the spirit of wisdom is pouring on you the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom for you to be able to navigate and come out of this multi waters that i see he's bringing you out of it he's granting you wisdom that's just he's bringing you into the vault of solution you will suddenly realize you will suddenly see you will not just perceive by perception you will see what you need to do to come out of the situation that you are in i see someone who is terribly in minus heavily indebted but the lord is bringing wisdom he's pouring wisdom on you thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray father jesus 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 anoint anoint again jesus anoint again anoint again jesus anoint again anoint again anoint again Woo! anoint again jesus anoint again anoint again anoint again anoint again anoint again anoint again lord jesus anoint again jesus anoint again anoint again anoint that daughter of zion anoint again anoint again anoint again for the lord open my eyes and i see hair growing out from people's head again lord anoint again tonight anoint again anoint again let the river flow light up everyone here again light up everyone here light up everyone here light up everyone here again let your light what is the true light he lights everyone that comes into the world light us again let the brilliance of your face and the expression of your image find expression again swallow up infirmities swallow up weaknesses 
let your spirit help our infirmity with and by groanings that cannot be altered groanings that cannot be explained in the name of jesus christ touch our finances touch our career touch our businesses oh my god occasion a shift here tonight there are about four persons that i'm talking to on my left that should be your right about four persons on my left the conference ends today your confusion ends today the conference ends today your pain ends today the conference ends today and god opens you onto a new journey in the name of jesus christ there are some of you listening to me tonight your own conference will begin after now because you will receive instructions on what to do even as the spirit is saying to you come up you will receive grace and capacity to obey him in the name of jesus and everyone here anyone here suffering from rejection I speak to you, you are my right. You are a lady. From today, we turn that around. Amen. We turn it around. Amen. No more rejection. Amen. That season is over in your life. Amen. That season is over in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Only that which the Lord declares and only that which the Lord says will find expression in your life in the precious name of jesus christ no more no more no more will you operate from that place of rejection and every complex that has come upon you because of that the effect of that today is abolished it's broken in the name of jesus christ can you give the lord a clap Okay, so let me just touch a few things in scriptures for 10, 20 minutes. And if it's more than 20 minutes, um, Pastor Ayah will give me a sign. Praise the Lord. Second Peter, first, uh, first Peter chapter 2, from verse 5. This spirit song was what, when he sang, I, I, this scripture came alive in me. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus. God Almighty, in the opening scripture of this, 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 1, talked about how the flesh affects the work of the Lord. How God will want us to come to the place where we take away bitterness, we take away envy, we take away malice from our work with him, to the place where only his counsel will begin to find expression. And the end result is because he wants to have a home, his building. So he, he used some metaphors here to speak to us. That for us to be able to come into this matter, there are certain things that will read us or he will read out of our lives. And if this must happen, we must apply ourselves to that work with him. Because if we don't apply our, that our work with him, there is no way he will be able to do that which he wants to do. Your will, your choice matters in the work of the kingdom. There is nothing that can happen. There is nothing that will ever, ever find meaning or will come into the place of eternal value if you are not willing to submit. So he said to us that we first and foremost must lay aside all malice. We must lay aside all envy. 
you must lay aside all strife. And then he went on to say, as babes, we should desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow by. Okay? You will see that before God began to talk about the corporate essence of the church, he began to individuate his counsel. First and foremost, to us as individuals, there are certain things that we must work on. We must take away envy. We must take away jealousy. We must take away strife. And if we don't deal with these matters, we can only gather together, but it will be difficult to achieve a building. Because the goal of our individual work is that by the time we come together to offer incense, there will be feedback. Feedbacks will come only because all of us have had taken time to work on ourselves. He said, wherefore, laying aside, the Holy Ghost will not do that work. The Holy Ghost is not going to do the work of the laying aside. It's you. You will consciously bring yourself to that place where you will say, Lord, you know what? I have trouble with anger. I have trouble with jealousy. I have trouble with envy. And then the moment you begin to say that to him, you are ready to be a part of that bride. You are ready to be a part of the people that will be called up to stand and to represent him here upon the face of the earth. And to do that, the way to do that is by the sincere milk of the word. It's in taking in the word. As you begin to take in the word, you see, mm, I gave my life to Christ September 14, 1999. And before I did that, I was a bad boy. And as a bad boy, I did all sorts of things. But there are things that instantly died in my life. And there are some that didn't die. It took 10 years of approaching the sincere word of the Lord. It took 15 years for some. And for some, it took the 20th year of my salvation. And make no mistake about it, I gave my life to Christ in 1999. I got ordained 2001. So two years of my work with God. That means I had a very recognizable growth by my pastor for them to have ordained me as a minister of the gospel. But there, was, there were things inside that didn't die, which is what is, we speak high symbol revelation. But you see, today, if somebody looks at Shea and say more grace, don't say thank you. Because the people that say more grace become envious of that prayer they prayed. Uh, he's trying to show himself. So these are the little, little things that affect us. And so God was speaking through Peter here. And he said, look, the way to show that you are not a man of envy, the way to show that you are not a man of malice, because the Bible said that concerning malice, we should be children. But in understanding, we should be matured. There is something that kills revival. There is something that kills our corporate essence. It's not Satan. It's us. The malice, the envy, the bitterness, the jealousy, the, the ability and the desire to want to undo ourselves. Because we are talking about the spirit and the bride. And if we are talking about the spirit and the bride, there are certain things that must not be found among us. Listen, God is a builder. And Paul said, as a master builder, I have laid the foundation. Okay? So if God is a builder, I hope you know that this building is not, not all blocks are whole. How many of you are aware? In this building, some blocks are quarter blocks. Some are half block. And some are whole block. You may not be a full block in this scheme. But if you don't know that, it will be difficult for you to make up the spiritual house. And when we talk about the spiritual house, we are talking about the, the house that will attract the glory. The way you know that a house is a spiritual house is not by colors. The way you know that a house is a spiritual house is not by all these gadgets. It's by we standing. And when we say Jesus appear, he makes an appearance. The only way you know that the temple was accepted after it was built, because we are talking building, was the fact that the glory of the Lord came on it and men could not enter. 
even at the expense of the older generation in the book of Ezra, when fathers built, everyone thought that when the older generation came, they looked at the house and they said, what are you talking about, Reverend Gideon? This house is not as beautiful, is not as sure-footed in terms of foundation as the one that we built. But God came and said, what are you talking about? The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Why? Because he ordered for them to go build. So when you look at that scripture, and I'm going into my scripture proper, it said the goal is we are lively stones. How do we become lively stones? If I were to give you a theological presentation here, I would have said to you that, okay, you know, the first building after Adam and Eve was in Genesis chapter 11, and that first building was by bricks, right? So you see the alternate system in that scripture, but that's not my concern tonight. My concern is that God is building a spiritual house. How do we attain that spiritual house? What do we need to do? What do we need to know in order to be able to represent God accurately so that God can find our house as a corporate house suitable for what he wants to do? I said, I put it this way to a lot of us, that in this generation, it seems to me, it seems to me, my personal opinion, that it is better to pray alone than to pray a corporate prayer. Why? Because in this day and time, when you ask us to pray corporately and we hold our hands to pray, you will find out that it's difficult to ascend. But when you go to your closet, when you go to your room to pray, the apertures of the spirit are open and you can easily navigate what is going on because there are infirmities of the flesh. There are infirmities of the flesh. Issues that we have re refused to deal with. Matters that we have refused to surrender to the Lord. And so you come together and say, Lord, let there be rain. The moment you say, let there be rain, it will begin to rain. The moment you say, let there be no rain, God says, you know what? There are three people here who are defiled. And we are saying, if the Spirit should come, can we stand? So God wants lively stones. But how many of you know that there will be no lively stones until there are tried stones? God will not release you as a lively stone until you are tried. It means for you to become a lively stone, you will go through what I call pressure. You will go through intense pressure. You will go through isolation. The Lord will deal with you. How many of you here are used to the gentle Holy Ghost? How many of you have met the Holy Ghost that says, if I slap you, don't cry? That's process. When we begin to talk about these spiritual realities, brothers and sisters, I just want to break it down for you. When the Spirit says, come, it's not as it seems. That come will take you through journey. That come will take you through sacrifice. That come will take you through isolation. That come will take you through pain. That come will take you through things you cannot explain. And the, 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 the objective of the, of the Lord is to build you into a house. That for me to be able to build you into a spiritual house, I need you first to be lively. I need you first to be a stone that is not just a stone, but a stone that is lively. A stone that I've hewn out by myself. I've taken time to cut you out. I've cut you into the shape, into the range that I want to achieve. And if that is not done, there is no way you can fit into this spiritual house wherein you can offer me sacrifices that are acceptable. So not every sacrifice is acceptable. And let me give you an example. I went to minister somewhere, Pastor Ayo, and they gave me a portrait. And I told them to open it. When they opened it, I said, I will take the portrait, but it's not acceptable. I didn't, I, the picture was in there wasn't looking like me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Did you get it now? I will take it, but it's not what? Acceptable. 
So that's why I, I said, open, something just said, open it. But so I don't discourage them and say, I will take it. But this is not what? Acceptable. So what I did is, the moment we left, I wind down and I threw it away. That's how we are before the Lord. There are many of us in the hands of God. The best he can do is to say, okay, you are not ready yet. Let me keep you until you are ready. Praise the Lord. Let me, let, me, let me just drop you until you are ready. And you also discover that the motive of our pursuit these days, the things we pursue God for, the anointings that we want, right? I was telling somebody, I said, if I tell you something, you won't believe that in my first 10 years of my work with God, I didn't beg him for power. In my first 10 years of work with God, I didn't tell him, give me grace to prophesy. Most of the things I do as a Christian, they come to me naturally. And that's what God wants us to be. That you are doing, you are working the supernatural naturally. You are attaining heights in God that everybody knows that um, this, this thing that is going on with this man's life, we can see the signature of God in and around him. So he said, you are lively stones. You have built up a spiritual house. You must come to that place where you open yourself up to the process of God, to the dealings of God. And as the Lord begins to do that with you, you begin to find the ability to yield to him, yieldedness, the ability to become pliable in his hand will only happen as you allow him to apply pressure on your soul. As you allow him to, you know, people will come say, Lord, see, I'm 38. If you don't give me an answer, I will walk away. A young lady came to testify when I was preaching in Canada. And she said, I told God that I'm coming to this meeting. If you don't speak to me this time, when I go back, I will backslide. I went to her and said, backslide now. Don't wait until this program finishes. Because you will waste in hell. So you, you, you can't threaten God. You can't, you can't push the Lord. You will have to wait and trust and depend and, and, and make up your mind. That this is the way to go. Isaiah 26. Let me show you a scripture. I hope I'm correct. All right, so where's that scripture that talks about the tried stone? 28, verse 16. Thank you. Isaiah 28, verse 16. So I'm speaking from my spirit. Just follow me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation. A stone. Somebody say a stone. I, I want you to see the process. First, it's a stone. Standing independently. Operating until a force was applied. I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. A tried stone. A precious corner stone. A sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Please help me tell your neighbor, you are a lively stone, not the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone. And if Jesus is the cornerstone, the Bible is telling us the process he went through to become that foundation. Because no other foundation can be laid as against that one that Christ has laid. Am I communicating with you? So he said, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone. By the time Jesus was going to be talking to us through Peter, he never called us what? Cornerstones. He called us lively stones. Because we must take our bearing from him, and he is the chief cornerstone. 
So in the Bible, there are three very solid stones that you cannot do, that you, can, you, can't, you cannot operate without. One is the cornerstone. The other one is the foundation stone. And the third one is the capstone. These three stones are very fundamental in holding the building that God is building upon the face of the earth. And so he spoke to us here that if Jesus will go through process, if Jesus will go through temperature and heat, if Jesus will go through all of these things in order to come into the name that is above every other name, if you are followers of Jesus, you also will come under this intensity. You will come under the intense pressure of the Lord. And how will the pressures of the Lord come on you? The burdens of the kingdom. That you will come to the place where you begin to bear the burdens of the Lord. Where the Lord can come and he will trouble you by himself. The Lord will look at you and he will say, this is what troubles me. And because this is prophetic streams, I was in, I was in, I was in Canada. And I want to cast this burden on us. I spoke to Pastor Ayo, but we didn't get to talk. I said, Baba, disclosures just came. I was in my room, sleeping. And I had the opportunity, by divine providence, the Lord took me into a vision. And I found myself in the highest office of this country. And when I stood in the highest office of this country, I saw men who were talking. I won't mention their names. And while they were talking, they said, Nigeria is in, the state of, is, is in the state of transaction now. Nigeria is in a transactionary mode. And what we want to do is, I have not heard that before, I've watched it in a movie, that we want to break the hands that are ruling Nigeria. And in that vision, they said there are six to seven hands. I will only mention one. And they itemized their names. And the man that was itemizing this name is from Northwest. And he atomized them. And they mentioned your daddy. And they said, General Basenjo is one. And we need to take off his hand. And in order for us to do that, we, you need to agree with us, oh Mr. President. We need to enter a new, fresh covenant with you. And as we enter into this covenant, we want to take out these six to seven names and we want to bring in fresh names. And I heard the name of two fresh names. When I woke up, I went to Google them. And then I called Pastor Ayo. I said, Orawao, there's trouble in the land. There's trouble in the land. One of the things that will happen is when that kind of burden comes on you, you don't even know what to say. You don't know how to prosecute it because that is the burden of the Lord for a nation. So God begins to take you out of your comfort zone. He begins to bring you into a fresh reality. He begins to bring you into issues that borders his heart. You will realize that as you begin to come into this office, issues about marriage will no longer be a thing of concern. You will realize that as God begins to build you up into a spiritual house, as God begins to forge his will around you, you will suddenly realize that the issue of breakthrough will no longer be a problem. Because breakthrough is the consequence of alignment. Breakthrough is the consequence of alignment. As we begin to follow him, as we begin to treasure him, as he begins to teach you, and he begins to train you, he begins to beat you into shape, he begins to determine the things you do, he begins to determine the places you go, the things and the places you travel to, you will suddenly realize it's because God is forging you into another kind of man. If you really work with God, if you really pursue God, he will alter your person. He will alter your person. He will, he will alter everything about you. Jesus started as a stone. He went on to be a tried stone. He went through trials, and you know, when he went through that, he became a precious cornerstone and then he became what? A sure foundation. Do you know the story of, the, of that stone that was rejected? That precious cornerstone. Do you know the story? 
Do you know the traditional story behind a precious cornerstone? That precious cornerstone is found in the temple when they were building it. And as they were building that temple, Pastor Ayo, you know everything was measured and pre-finished at the quarry site. So when you are bringing the stones to the, the site, there was no sound. While they were building, history said to us, as they were carrying the stones, there was one stone that looked insignificant. And while they were moving the stones, one of them saw the stone. Hey, there was, there's a stone here. And as the guy was moving, he saw the stone and, and he kicked it away. Then when they finished the building, you are a theologian, so you can correct me. When they finished the building, they were walking around to dedicate the building. That was when they saw a hole. On the wall. How many of you remember that hole that Ezekiel looked through? Are you with me? How many of you remember that God said, Come, let me show you what is going on in the temple? That's an aperture of the spirit. It's just that cornerstone that was taken off and he could peep inside. And that cornerstone is who? Jesus. So they said to them, We are not going to complete this work introducing this building. We need to look for this stone. Then one guy said, I remember, I saw one stone and I kicked it off. When we are talking about a sure cornerstone, we are talking about the tendency to be despised. That you will come to the place where there is this tendency that where you stand, many will despise you. I remember when the Lord gave us an assignment in Lagos. And he said, go into Lagos and infiltrate the place with prayer. So I wanted to go and do 10 hours of prayer every month, every other month. I said, 10 hours of prayer. And the one we're going to start, everybody said, look, son, don't even try this thing. My pastors in Sokoto called me. Are you mad? My friends, everyone spoke against it. But the Lord said, this is what I want you to do. Lagos must pray again. You know, the, you know now today, is there, is there a way you earn if you on Facebook, you will see 10 hours in different places. Different places. Out of Nigeria. CAC. Different places. You know why that is possible? Because when it came and I was despised, I was not ashamed. You know what you do to shame? You know what Jesus did to shame? What did he do to shame? He despised it. You must come to the place you must have the ability, you must come to the place, you must have the ability where you despise shame. You should be able to bear shame for the gospel. You should be able, oh, I see my neighbors here. Oh my God, they don't know me today. Well done, sir. We're in the same estate. Amen? You should be able to despise what? Shame. So Jesus, this scripture that is talking about the cornerstone is talking about the ability to despise shame. If we must come in as houses that God will warehouse for himself, we must despise shame. The ability to withstand pain also must be there. So we will despise shame. We will withstand what? Pain. Because God will take us through faces. So this is talking about Jesus here and this is talking about Jesus here. Thank you. This is talking about Jesus here and then I will show you one or three more things. You can take your pen. When we talk about a spiritual house, the spiritual house, we go through this. There's a building process that the spiritual house we go through. The spiritual house we go through the building process. And in the building process of a spiritual house, there are three things we need to consider. We will consider the foundation. Right? When we consider the foundation, we will consider the structure. When we consider the structure, we will also consider the roof. Okay? So, in these three layers, whenever you build, there will be storms. There will be earthquake and there will be wind or what you call there will be rain. 
So as you go into this building, because God is going to expose your life, three things will be tried. Your roof will be tried. And that's your covering. When God begins to say he's building up a house for himself, these three layers must be tried. Number one, your roof, your covering. It is therefore very tricky and dangerous to walk as a believer without a covering. Because your covering will be tried. When the rain begins to fall, will your covering be leaked? Will the enemy gain penetration? As God begins to build us into a spiritual house, we must be impregnable. We must come to the place where the enemy cannot penetrate because our roof, I'm, and I'm, I'm using the word build alone. Is there anyone among you who we want to build and not first consider the cost? And that's the only word I want to isolate as I begin to round up. When the Lord is talking about building, it means that our structures, because there is no problem with the foundation. Jesus is a sure foundation. But for you to sit and rest on him, you will go through these three phases. Your roof, your covering will be challenged, and that will be by the reign of life. By the reign of accusation. By the reign of lies. By the reign of your mistakes, because there are people who made mistakes and were not able to come out of it. And number two, one of the things that will be tried, your foundation. We want to know your confession. I remember many years ago, when I got married, we had our first child, and the enemy came, and they told me that, oh, brother, we are sorry, you have low spam count. And that was the first time I was hearing that word. <laughs> I said to the doctor, what is the meaning of that? What is that? He said, the mortality rate is, I said, don't worry. My foundation was being tried. And when my foundation was tried, before that time, the Lord had spoken to me. I was in this star worshiping the Lord. When Satan said to me, I will, you will not have children because you've wasted your life. You've slept around with women. So I'm, not, I'm going to ensure you don't have kids. And I heard an audible cry of a baby in my ears. And while they were worshiping, the Lord took me into the visions of the, of the day and he said, Satan said you won't have children. I am saying you will have children. I will give you three, a boy and a girl and a boy. And this will be their names. Don't ever think that God will give you supernatural encounters and there will be no trials for them. You will be tried. The way to become a bride is that you will be tried. I hope you know that the way you know that a man or a woman is born again. Truly, put them in marriage. This is your kako, kako, kako that you preach. Oh, hold on, when you marry and you come out, some of you, when you marry, you will not have the zeal to talk about the Holy Ghost again because you will know that you are a defaulter. The best place to try a man and a woman is in marriage. It's not in speaking in tongues. So you will, you will begin to suddenly see your foundation. Are you strong? So when Satan said that to me, I went back to God and I brought back the words he said to me. You are the one that said you will give me three children. And they said I have low sperm count. Can you quicken my body again? And the Lord said, take pap. Wisdom came and said, take pap. Somebody said, take pap. I began to shock pap. <laughs> I shock pap, shock pap. Then I went back. And the doctor said, hey, what did you do? I said, what did you see? He said, the thing is back. Before I said any other thing, I said, thank you, bye-bye. I just want to let you know that God is strong. And I left. Then I came back, I said, babe, are you ready? Because if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, he will what? He will quicken you. He will quicken you. Finally, I know my time, I'm, I'm rounding up now. 
the structure of your life will be tried. Structure. And in structure, that is where you live by design. Your covering will be tried. Your foundation will be tried. Your structure will be tried. And Jesus is the superstructure. Jesus is the substructure. Nothing happens to that structure. That structure is as sure as the heavens. But you have the tendency to operate like a reed. You know what a reed is? A reed is very flexible and unstable. That when the, when the, when the, when the wind is blowing on you, what happens? This is how to become a spiritual house. A man that will defile the system must be a man that is under accurate cover. I can tell you that. And when I'm talking covering, I'm not here to exalt a man. I am talking about covering that comes by revelation. Covering that comes by what? Revelation. The man of God called me into his office. And he said, who am I to you? I'm, I was a member of the church. And I said, sir, he said, who am I to you? I said, you are my pastor. He said, no, I am your spiritual father. I said, no, I am, you are my pastor. You are not my spiritual father. God sent me here to help. You don't have that right to call me a spiritual father, a spiritual son. Because I told him in that conversation, I said, when I gave back to my son, I didn't tell him I'm his father. That was why I began to pay attention to fatherhood. When I gave my son, when God gave me my son, he looked at me, Kore, and he said, hallelujah. But my daughter looked at me and she said, dada. So I understood the first fruit thing, that my son was replicating first fruit. Then my daughter called me dada. So I told the pastor, my own children called me father. I didn't impose it on them. You are my pastor. I know my covering. That was how war boss broke out in that church. I said, I'm a rebel. It was on that phrase, this issue I'm talking to you on, that was when the, my exit began. The plan for my exit started because I said, you are my pastor. But do you know that, what did I call Papi today? What did I call him? Did you tell me to call you Papi? I have revelation. Apostle Roman never said, I'm your father. From where? Left to right. Where are you coming from? I know who I am in God. And because I know who I am in God, God will be the one to tell me who my father is. But before you meet your Jesus, stay with your John. Because your John will point you to Jesus. And as he points you to Jesus, he will be secured enough to allow you go. Because covering is of essence. So as we leave, I leave you with these three things. That as God builds... Your structure will be tried. Make sure you are, you are not without a structure. Your accountability lines must be open. Make sure you are not without a cover. You know they said to you in this new generation, call no one father. Go and study that scripture and study the context of that scripture. You have many instructors. But what? One father. I know who my father is. I'm not a bastard. And your father is not necessarily the one that led you to Christ. John showed us that example. There can be cross-pollination. And there are many of you who are under such bondage. And in the name of Jesus Christ, receive grace to know who your father is. And receive grace to walk and to do his bidding in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you rise on your feet? That as the spirit is calling you, you will take the issues of structure very seriously. And when I speak foundation, I'm not talking about spiritual foundations that you are used to. That there are negative foundations. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about marrying Jesus, coming into that mingling spirit between you and him. So that everything that is not from him, he will begin to break and break until he sets you free. And I want you to pray tonight. The Lord put the structures in my life. Put the structures in place. If you are here without a roof, 
Ask the Lord for that roof. Maybe you are like Job. As the Lord tries you and bring you under pressure and subject you under this pressure, that there will be this light bulb that will break out of, from your inside. You will no longer be structureless. You will no longer be without foundation. You will no longer operate without a roof, a covering. That from this day you are aligned to the governing structures. These three matters I raised are called the governing structures of the spirit life. The, the governing structures of the spirit life, your roof, your structure, and your foundation. This is what will raise you up as a bride that Jesus will be proud of. That you have an accurate covering you have a structure that is resting on the substructure on the substructure which is the sub key foundation of your work with god the lord as we move and as we leave i will no longer be exposed my foundation is on the cornerstone my foundation is on the sure stone and as i'm being tried i give myself to the process since I was born and now I am old I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread Jesus will be your sure foundation Jesus will give you covering and he will send men who are meant to tutor you men who are meant to keep you to keep you he says so stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has given to you that ye may be no more entangled with the yoke of bondage therefore every yoke of bondage every heavy yoke on your shoulder on your neck is hereby broken in the name of Jesus Christ every yoke that is placed on you and that is not from God today we command it to be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ your structure your foundation and your roof is hereby proclaimed by the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may the Lord do for you what you can do for yourself may the Lord be your eye may the Lord give you a seeing eye may the Lord give you a hearing ear May the Lord give you an understanding heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we open you up to new seasons. We open you up to fresh encounters. That the Lord bring you up and he begins to teach you by himself. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we create pathways for you to navigate in the spirit. Pathways where the Lord will come and teach you scriptures. Pathways where the Lord will come and teach you secrets. Because the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. His secret will come to you in the name of the lord jesus christ the secret things belong to god and the things that are revealed unto us and our children that we may observe to do the law the secrets of the lord will not be far from you in the name of the lord jesus christ i was in canada god said to me son when i love a man i give him myself but when i pity him i give him things may god give you himself may your life be structured for encounters and may you always know the seasons of encounters. Oh my God, I pray for somebody. May you know when the Holy Ghost beckons for encounters. May you know when the Holy Ghost beckons for visitation. May you know when the Holy Ghost is calling you to come up. The way you know how to go to have take your bath. The way you know when you wake up, you need to brush your feet. May the Lord God Almighty bring you to the place where you understand that I'm in the season of divine visitation. May you know, may you know, may you sense it. May you know when the Bible is calling you. Many of us know when prayer, is, prayer beckons, but we don't know when God wants to open the scriptures to us. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. From this day, you will know how scriptures call you. I'm praying, I'm praying for somebody. You will know how scriptures call you. You know, you know, it's not all the time. Let's let me tell you the truth. Not all the time. It's not every time you can study for nine hours. But when the Holy Ghost calls, you can sit for nine, ten hours. My prayer for you is you will not miss those days. You will not miss those days of visitation because god has occasioned a calendar of visitation for you i know god has raised you to be a holy habitation but within that he has also occasioned when he will bring you up and he will show you things that ears have not heard eyes have not seen 
neither has it entered into the hearts of men but the holy ghost reveals them to you this i pray for in jesus name can you give the lord a clap